Let's say a little bit more about epistemology, and I think this is especially an interesting branch of philosophy. There are several questions in epistemology, and the first one might not immediately be to interest to you. It is about the definition of knowledge. The definition of knowledge. What does it mean to know? And what does it mean to know when talking about metaphysics I said that it is about such stuff as what does it mean to be human, what does it mean to be a table, what is the essence of humanness, of tableness, and we could put knowledge here as well and ask the metaphysical question of the ultimate reality, the ultimate essence of what knowledge is. And one could interpret this first epistemological question in this metaphysical way but not necessarily. The question on what knowledge really is can also be one about conceptual clarification rather than a real deep metaphysical issue. Therefore, the first one is a question of definition or of essence, depending on how metaphysically inclined you are. If it's a question of definition, the issue is what does it mean to know? If it's a question on essence, then the idea is what is the essence of knowledge? And I sympathize with just giving a conceptual clarification of it. There are already some interesting issues. For instance, knowledge is generally believed to be a kind of true belief. It is a belief, right? If I know that some guy is, let's say, standing on a table, jumping on a table, then I have a belief of this guy standing or jumping on the table. <clears throat> And for this belief to be knowledge, often philosophers will say it has to be true. It has to be true somehow. However, what is that truth? And here a whole debate in philosophy is going on. And on the one hand, you have people who believe that truth is correspondence. Correspondence with reality. That means that... For our knower to know that, let's say, Pete is jumping on the table, that must correspond with the reality of Pete indeed jumping on the table. That is a, the correspond, correspondence theory of truth. There is an alternative one, and that is the pragmatist theory. Pragmatist. And there the idea is that a true belief is not necessarily one that corresponds to reality, but is merely one which is useful. If you have a certain belief, and if it's useful, it is, let's say, true. There's nothing more to truth than the usefulness of a belief. Let me perhaps give an example to make that clear. Let's take a controversial example. The belief in God. Okay, for this belief to be true, for our belief in God to be knowledge, must this really correspond to the reality of God? Well, pragmatists will say, as long as this belief in God, uh, let's say uh, we have our God on our cloud, as long as this belief in God is useful in our behavior, it might help us in morally acting, it might give meaning to our life, it might help us in many ways, it might be useful in many ways, then that's all, that's all about truth. <clears throat> now, this is on the definition of knowledge, and you might like it or not. There are perhaps more interesting questions even, and that is the issue of the possibility of knowledge. Once we have defined what knowledge is, we can ask, well, is it possible to achieve it? And that is the issue of the possibility of knowledge. And there are two camps, really, two broad camps. On the one hand, you have the skeptics. The skeptics. Skeptics deny that knowledge is possible. They say, 
it might be that we're constantly dreaming, that we're dreaming and never waking up. And this is possible. I mean, you cannot distinguish between, let's say, dreaming about God or about Pete jumping on a table and really seeing or grasping or being in touch with a real Pete jumping on a table. It could really be a dream. And this possibility that it's a dream is enough for skeptics to conclude that knowledge is not possible. This is one camp. A second camp, and they don't really have a, that straightforward of a name, so let's just call him the, them the non-skeptics. The non-skeptics, and you might guess what they will say. They believe that it is possible, right? That you can make the bridge from thinking to reality. That's the idea on the possibility or the impossibility of knowledge. And then there's a third question in epistemology. And that is one on the sources of knowledge. Sources. If we have properly defined what knowledge is, and if, let's say, we concluded with the non-skeptics that such a thing is possible, that knowledge is possible, then we can wonder how do we arrive at knowledge? How do we come to know? So, let's say that we're correspondence theorists and that we believe that a true belief is really one that is able to make the bridge to a reality. If we believe that, then one might still wonder how can we get to that reality? And there are two main roads to that reality, let's say. Either you can use your brain to try to make the bridge. So you make the bridge by thinking very hard, you use your brain, and you reason your way to reality, you think about it, or you use your senses. You see what happens, you observe something. If you use your brain, and philosophers like to call it reason, for some reason, reason, it's a little bit more abstract than the brain, but for our purposes it's fine to, to imagine it's just, just this organ, the brain, at the top of our head. These philosophers who believe that reason is the source of knowledge, that our intellectual thinking is the source of knowledge, are called rationalists. Rationalists. You might have encountered this term um, in your philosophy classes or, or anywhere. If you believe in reason as a source of knowledge, you're a rationalist. And on the other hand, you might already guess what um, this philosophy is called, which believes that the senses are the source of knowledge. Indeed, this is empiricism. Empiricism. And the word tells you something, right? Rationalism, there's something like reason in it, or the Latin form, ratio, of reason. And empiricism, too, refers to empirical issues, empirical data. So these guys think that sense experience, experience is very important. Okay. So that is what... Epistem these are examples of epistemological issues in general. And in the next lesson I will say something about applications of epistemology because you have general, general epistemology, what we've been talking about now, but you can also apply it to a bunch of different specific kinds of knowledge.